What's up, y'all? I am Zuri Hall, and I am a correspondent on Access Hollywood, sideline reporter for NBC's American Ninja Warrior, and you are locked in to UrbanBridges.com. You look too good to not break down this look for me. Okay, what was the inspiration? on pink too. <laughs> I got your memo. Okay, I got your memo. Like, let me go talk to my friend. Oh okay. My goodness. So you look absolutely stunning. Give me a fashion confession. My blank looks blank in this gown. Like, what do you love most? My boobs look good in this dress. Good as hell, Megan. Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, hello, Zuri. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with Urban Bridges. We genuinely appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and jump into this and go ahead and get started. When did you discover your love for journalism? Ooh, um, I discovered my love for hosting in general, um, just sort of having a presence on air. Um, probably, gosh, how old was I? 21, I think. I'd always grown up in, in theater and in the arts on stage. I did a little bit of commercial work as a kid um, with like local agencies, but I won a competition to become the face of a local TV station right before I graduated from Ohio State, where I'd been on a full academic ride and it was almost time to graduate. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do next. I know I wanted to be in entertainment, um, but I didn't really know what that first foot in the door was going to look like because it's so competitive. I was constantly submitting resumes and um, acting resumes, traditional professional resumes, reels, all these things, and just getting a thousand no's like so many people can relate to. Um, and then I found out about this competition. I drove from Columbus to Indianapolis to audition. Long story short, a few hundred people auditioned. I ended up in the top 10 and then the top five. And then I won a contract to be the face of that local station. So it was really like baptism by fire. I never thought of hosting or TV presenting um, as a viable career. Acting, yes. Music, yes. Uh, writing or PR in the industry, yes. But for some reason, I never thought about hosting. So I started doing it. I loved it. It was um, a really cool first job out of college to just be, you know, interviewing local leaders and and um, pitching stories and ideas, coming up with lifestyle segments, highlighting the best and the most fun of what Indianapolis had to offer. And that's when I, I really fell in love with it. And I thought, you know what, this has legs. I, I sense momentum. I take one step. It feels like the universe takes me three, four, five more. So let's just see how far we can go with it. So I, I got on the train and haven't hopped off yet. <laughs> so it's been great. So yeah, I know you mentioned um, acting and being an actress. Would you say that that was ultimately kind of the shift for you and kind of the change that made you drift more into the broadcast thing and kind of drift out of acting? Um, yeah, I think that was definitely a shift in that I wouldn't say that I was pursuing acting full time up until that point. You know, I was mostly focused on university. Um, I was thinking of backup plans, even though I don't really believe in backup plans. So I was kind of like, it was like fake backup planning. I always was like, I'm just going <laughs> to go to LA or New York or Atlanta and, and just grind it out and see what happens. But to make me feel better, to make my parents make me feel better, I was putting out the resumes and all this stuff for like, you know, more corporate gigs. Um, but acting wasn't something, honestly, that I was full-time pursuing yet, um, but I was ready to do it. I was ready to just pack a suitcase and move to the coast and kind of just grind it out in the industry and see where I fell in it. Would it be PR and entertainment? Would I actually be lucky enough to be acting in the entertainment industry? Would I be behind the scenes or on camera? I wasn't entirely sure. Um, but luckily, you know, I got that job before I even graduated at university. So I moved to Indianapolis, started the, the job on air, and then came Came back to walk so i never really had to shift or pivot from one career to the next it was straight from college campus to on air on screen uh just about every day at this station and like i said i just kind of hit the ground running with it um so if anything now i'm, I'm more excited to start to dabble in, in the scripted space again, you know, what's been cool about my career path is uh, like we're at that intersection, right? I'm interviewing so many of these amazing actors and, and, and singers and talent for a living. Um, and so I've been able to play myself in scripted shows like um, The Morning Show. I got to act opposite Jay Aniston, which was amazing. And Mindy Kaling uh, for Apple TV's uh, show, scripted series, which has been a huge hit. And for E, their show, The Arrangement, I got to play myself for a few episodes. Uh, I'm playing myself in one of Mario 
Lopez's upcoming holiday films, which will be fun. Yeah. Uh, so it's like fun and it's obviously not heavy lifting. I'm just being me, but it kind of got the acting bug going again. So I'm excited to, you know, maybe dabble into some characters that aren't myself in the future here. And I feel lucky because that seems more attainable since I'm in the industry and I've been in it long enough, you know, that that I can at least have access to the casting opportunities, but we'll see what happens. Well, good luck for that. And it'll go organic, so I mean, yay. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Good for you. <laughs> um, what has been the best part for you being a part of Access Hollywood? Ooh, the best part of being with Access Hollywood is really the culture and the the team mentality. I love being a part of an ensemble cast where when you're looking at hosts, the lineup of hosts, I don't know a more varied, a more multicultural, a more um, inclusive set, you know, from myself to Scott Evans, to Mario Lopez, to Kit Hoover, to the correspondents and, and freelancers that we employ to cover red carpets or do junkets. It just, when you watch our show, it's representative of what our country actually looks like. And that hasn't always been my experience in television. Um, and that hasn't always been what I've seen when I'm watching shows just as a fan or a viewer. So I'm really proud of that. Um, and then I really love the atmosphere. It's fun to go to work here, you know? Like, you know, our boss, our executive producer is like, everybody relax, it's just TV. And we take it very seriously, but then we're also self-aware enough to know, like we're really lucky and blessed to do what we do for a living. And we don't have to make it harder than it has to be. We don't have to make it more stressful than it has to be. You know, we hear so much about, um, toxic workplaces or negativity in the office or just people not liking the people they work with. And I've, I've been there before. <laughs> so I feel very lucky and blessed to genuinely be able to say, I am excited to collaborate with my co-hosts. I'm excited to work with the people that I work with. I have fun on the job. I have fun on these shoots uh, because they make it a fun place to be. So that's probably the biggest highlight for me um is having a job that i actually look forward to doing because i know that that is a privilege that is not a guarantee um and i've certainly had other experiences where that wasn't the case so so that's that's a big one for me what advice would you give to someone who wants to be a part of entertainment journalism and has no idea how to start or how to go about it what do you say mm, um anyone who who doesn't know where to start i would say um start within your four walls. Like it's so much easier now than ever before to create, to collaborate and to really just take off. You don't even need to leave your home these days, which still blows my mind to be discovered. It used to be that you had to pound the pavement, knock on doors, beg for meetings with casting directors or executive producers. You had to be in LA or in New York or in the city where it was happening or it just wasn't gonna happen. Now in this day and age with so many resources and connections at our fingertips, your next come up could literally be an Instagram DM away, which is crazy, but also really true. So I think a lot of people are like, oh, once I book this gig or if this casting director or this person just hires me, then I'll take off. I think those days are over. Now casting directors and, and producers are really looking for you to create a name for yourself and to create content and a strong POV first and they want to see, okay, what are their comment sections looking like? What is their YouTube following looking like? How are how is the fan base that he or she has already created um, responding to to their content? And then they decide if we want to hire you and give you a bigger platform or a bigger, um, a, a louder microphone. So I say just begin today. It really doesn't take much. Whether it's a microphone, you know, a three light setup and a decent camera, which these days our phones are camera enough. Um, that's it, upload the videos on YouTube. Who cares if it's only five people watching or 10 people watching? We just need the right person watching. And that was something that I had to realize early on. I used to get so discouraged when I was on YouTube and, and creating things myself because it's like, oh, I'm only getting however many views. But when I was moving to MTV, I spent about a year, year and a half there. Um, I was getting decent views at that time on some of my content, but it was really personality based. So if you watched my reel, you would see me in like a news format more often than not. So it was a little more buttoned up, a little more straight laced. 
But if you go to my YouTube channel, you get a feeling for who I am when the cameras aren't rolling, when I'm with my friends, if I'm vlogging, you're really getting a vibe for who Zuri just from Ohio is. And it was after an MTV executive saw my YouTube channel that that sealed the deal. That's when she was like, oh, I want her at this network. Even though she'd met me, she'd seen my reel, she saw all of my, you know, resume experience up until that point she was impressed but what sealed the deal i later found out was her seeing my personality come alive on youtube so it didn't matter that i wasn't getting a hundred thousand views per video the one person with the hiring power saw it and decided to you know change the trajectory of my life at that time i got a contract and overall deal with mtv which laid the path for e-news which laid the path for access hollywood um so i just encourage people to stay consistent um the race goes to the person who endures. It's so easy to start things and stop them in this day and age. But if you can just stay consistent, figure out who you are, what it is you want to say, um, and then, you know, ride it out. Because <laughs> sometimes it takes a while. Um, you'll be surprised at what can happen. Awesome. Well, I have so many more questions, but apparently we have to wrap up. We want to know about your YouTube. We want to know about your podcast. We want to know about your website. We don't have time. I'll quickly say, I will quickly say, I have my podcast, Zuri Hall's Hot Happy Mess. It's in partnership with the Black Effect Podcast Network, which is uh, the largest uh, network of its kind, led by my friend, my former colleague, Charlotte God, in partnership with iHeart. And we uh, just got picked up for season two, which I'm really proud of. I'm the executive. Congratulations. Of Thank you. Post it every week, new episodes every Wednesday, and it's all about best life minus the burnout. So we're focusing on millennial women who uh, want to achieve, but from a lens of self-care and wellness. Achieving all of your goals is only worth it if you feel good and happy and well while you're achieving them. My 20s, I achieved so much that I'm so proud of, but I was burnt out. I was emotionally and mentally drained. I wasn't well. Um, and so my 30s, I've rededicated, I've not even rededicated, dedicated myself for the first time to how do I do this in a way that feels good, in a way that has me excited instead of dreading waking up the next day and doing all of this stuff. And so this podcast has a bunch of experts, licensed therapists, my real life friends um, and, and, and family coming on and giving their advice. I'm sharing my advice uh, for all things self-care, relationships, uh, dating, mental wellness. Um, and I'm really focused on centering the voices of, of, of BIPOC women. So it's especially Black women, especially Black therapists, um, experts in the field, real women telling their stories, because I truly believe our stories are for everyone. So I don't care what your background is or what you identify as, um, Black women have so much to offer and share and pour into everyone, not just us. Um, and so I'm helping to highlight our voices and our stories. And it's been an amazing two seasons and we've got a lot more on the way. So how happy mess, it's free and it's every Wednesday and I'd love it if y'all tune in. And then obviously Access Hollywood, we're, we're doing the thing every every weeknight, Monday through Friday. So check your local listing. Awesome, thank you so much for spotlighting that so we can add it in there for sure. So just out of respect for time, we will wrap it up. I appreciate you and thank you so much. You are such a joy and keep doing your thing, girl. You're an inspiration. And so I, you know, look forward to everything else that you are doing.